Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production, and welcome to Season 3. Finally, at long last, uh, we've been waylaid by lots of different things, not just that we were like getting our ducks in a row for new episodes, but you know, other things that you may be experiencing as well. And we are finally back at it, super excited, and this season is entirely supported by our Patreon supporters. And we are just so overwhelmed by the generosity of the community and if anyone out there wants to contribute please follow the link below to our patreon so you can be a part of making sure that we continue to do this that we can continue to do this um, and that you can have a little bit of influence in what we do here today we are doing a little bit of a continuation of a long ago sort of muffling comparison video on the snare and moving to the toms we're going to do a few different muffling scenarios on them and do a little bit of a what are these for compare them a little bit So we have a long history of muffling drums here. Um, American music, world music, all sorts of music affects their drums in different ways to get certain kinds of sounds. Sometimes it's to emulate other instruments or to get a certain kind of aesthetic for the music you're making. And there is so much variety that is incredibly inexpensive and even kind of DIY stuff, which we've gone hard with the bass drum and the snare on already. And we haven't really done a Tom specific one, so we thought it'd be fun to put together some grooves, put together a couple of muffling scenarios, and sort of show how they behave where we don't mess with the drums themselves at all. Please stay with us till the end also, because there's going to be a back-to-back -back comparison of all of these things after we've done all the sort of one-offs. First things first, let's go wide open, just play the drums as they are. So anybody who's watched our videos, you've seen these pearl drums before. They sound phenomenal. We've used them a lot. Um, we're using the whole kit today, the snare as well, and they're sounding lovely, nice and big and boomy. And now we want to tone them down a little bit. So the first place that I went for this when I was a kid was the thing that you get to do it, which is E-rings. So we're going to start with E-rings today. In case you're not familiar with them, uh, what an E-ring or a studio ring, depending on the brand or where you live, is basically a ring of drum head material that you just lay on the batter head and it focuses the tone and really quells the high end parts of the overtones. So this kind of sound I associate with the 70s and the 80s, um, Steve Gadd comes to mind, some other people that were into sort of like more focused and punchy and shorter drum sounds. And I also think of it as uh, being useful for minimal miking because if you're gonna be compressing the overheads 
little bit less overtone, a little more fundamental is actually a really nice thing to have. And the cool thing about studio rings, E-rings, etc., is that they come not only in diameters uh, for your drum, but also the actual width of the ring is a variable that can come into play as well. So you could use a narrower one or a wider one depending on how much you want to compress that drum down. Next up, my favorite, the one that I always, always, always bring with me, no matter where I'm going, no matter what the gig is, is the trusty bandana or tea towel, basically like a square of cloth. Now, if you've seen our earlier videos, you may have seen me attach one of those to my snare drum with a drum key sort of forced over it onto one of the tuning things and then rolling it back like to half of the drum. For the toms, I tend to put it over the whole thing because there's a lot more resonance. And, and for me, those are about like really deadening the drum and making it almost, almost kind of boxy in a way. It makes me think of sounds on, um, I don't know, like the band, records like that. Uh, maybe Neil Young stuff like Harvest, that kind of thing where, uh, again, Probably not a lot of microphones. They definitely want this stuff to stay below the vocal and below the orchestration. This is like punctuation. It's not a big sound. It's not meant to resonate for a long time. And the nice thing about those is if it is too much to have it over the whole head, you can roll it back and have it half, have it a quarter, wad it up on the end, whatever it takes. You can even kind of tape it up if you just want sort of like a ball of it just sitting on the edge. So hankies all the time. They're super great. And finally, the old, the faithful, the gaff tape. Now gaff tape is ubiquitous, it's everywhere, it's in every studio that I've ever been in for sure um, because of all the different ways that you might need it. And it also is a very malleable choice because you can use a lot of it, you can use a little of it. If you twist it up and put it on there, it behaves differently than if it's flat. I've used gaff tape at most studio sessions in one way or another. I mean, you put it on a cymbal that's too loud, it's, it's kind of like the Swiss Army knife item to have in your kit when you're getting your sounds going. And rather than going through a lot of different options for that, we're just gonna do two that are sort of flagged up in the way that I normally do it. The purpose of the sort of flag shape of it is twofold. It makes it easier to get it off of the drum when you wanna do that rather than having to peel the edge up. And it also concentrates more of the mass in the center of the placement of it. So you get sort of like a line in the center that has more weight. When you have just flat gaff tape on the head, it's moving with the head as one unit, which is another choice. But I like to use less tape with more of an impact, like a stronger node, rather than a lot of tape sort of flat all over the head. So now here for me, this sounds like what I would normally want to do if I was just trying to take a little bit of the high end overtones off, but keep the general sound of the drum and particularly the resonance. Gaff in this manner retains the most attack of any of the options that we went through. Um, with for me, the cloth being the most muffled and E-rings round things out a lot, but the kind of the click on the attack starts to get a little bit lost. So gaff is, is definitely the one that uh, seems to me to be the most versatile in terms of a choice of a thing to have if you're going to do some kind of muffling or if you know you're going to have to modify your sound for microphones. 
Now we could absolutely do a super long video demonstrating all of the aftermarket products that do some kind of muffling to your drums, gels and things that clip on and all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's all about just loading mass to the edge of the drum, or in some cases in the center, if you're thinking in terms of uh, drums that have like a patch or, or some kind of dot. Um, but applying extra mass, that's what we're doing with all of these things. And so anything you can think of to use, the old wallet trick, you know, um, the cotton ball thing inside the toms, that's mass loading in its own way to the to the rezo head. But it all comes back around to modifying the overtones, modifying the fundamental with extra mass stuck someplace. And it means you can kind of do whatever you want. All right, for those intrepid viewers who've made it this far, here's the back-to-back -back comparison of everything. Now, if you want to hear some of those stylistic variations and just like different ideas that I was inspired to do based on these muffling things, that's going to be showing up later in the week on the Patreon. So you can get over there, join up, check that out, and just see these demonstrated a little bit more with some other ideas beyond just the basic beats we did today. All right, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and head down and hit the notification bell so that you hear about our new videos. We are going to have a couple a week coming out for the next few weeks as we get caught up and rolling in season three, and we're super excited excited about it. Thanks again to all of our patrons and everyone that's reaching out to support and make sure that we can continue this channel. If you haven't checked it out, please follow the link below. Check out our Patreon. We have a lot of extra content on there for varying levels of contribution and it's really what's keeping us afloat right now. Um, it's really an amazing thing and we appreciate the community so much for helping us do that. And lastly, I wanna hear about your Tom muffling. I wanna know what you use, what you hate, where you heard about it, particularly things that differ from what we did here today. I mean, if you like to gaff the whole head, whatever it is, man, I wanna hear about it. So let us know in the comments and uh, yeah, keep playing and stay safe. <laughs>